B ads occasionally, and one of America's youngest billionaires. And recently he's used that money to become one of the biggest donors in this year's midterm elections. Sam, nice to see you. Thanks for coming in. Of course. So let me start. You're the fourth, you may not know this, but you know it now. You're the fourth largest individual donor, essentially, to the midterms for this cycle. You are on a list that includes George Soros, Ken Griffin, Richard Uline, Peter Thiel, just below you. Why did you decide it was politics and not something more charitable? to throw, spend your money on? It's a good question. And, you know, to be clear, we have also given, I think, upwards of $100 million this year. To I'm charity, not saying you're not to, charitable, but, right? But, but, you've but chosen to engage there's this, Right, exactly. Yeah. And I think that what it really goes down to is two things. And the first is that policy really matters, right? I think COVID is one of the clearest examples of this, where we did not, as a country or as a world, frankly, have a coherent response to COVID. And we missed in both directions. Mm -hmm. It was careening wildly around. And we still haven't learned the lesson. Like, it's not like if a new pandemic came today that we would be ready as, mm -hmm. to, to deal with it. Um, that's kind of a travesty because there probably will be another pandemic. And this has got to be a thing that government is involved in, that government is working proactively on. Um, it's just, it's an you know, one example of an incredibly important mm -hmm. thing that society has to do. And, you know, this is something that, that D.C. is going to have to play a big role in one way or another. Um, and I think that, like, doing what we can to support, mm -hmm. like, good policy there is, um, is one of the higher leverages, leverage things. Um, and then at the same point, and somewhat relatedly, I think just having a constructive atmosphere in D.C. is incredibly important. So, what, uh, first though, if the pandemic was your number one issue, yep. you could have easily gone the Gates route. Right. The right. Gates Foundation. And he, he decided that's the that's the area because he's been working on this for a decade. And, and it's been amazing. Right. Some of the things he's done. Why? Why did you think the political space would right. be even open to this conversation? Well, it's a good question. And we have also been looking at whether there are you know public health charities that we can be giving to mm -hmm. to help support work. Right. We're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly, we're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers in Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. This effort, and China has big plans for this. They intend to seed um, their digital yuan into the global environment by giving it away to visitors at next winter's Olympics. When they arrive at the airport, they're going to get di yuan digital wallets. They're going to receive digital yuan. They're going to use it uh, throughout their visits to Beijing, and then they're going to take it back to their home countries. They see this as a huge advantage. Why? Because who controls the underlying protocols? Who un controls the underlying standards? of the future of money will control the future of money. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, please like and subscribe if you do like what you're listening to. Inform your friends and family and spread all over social media. It is imperative that we get back to learning finances and understand how the world really works. Because once we understand how the world really works, we understand that it is all planned out. Now, I want to thank those who purchased the books, Crypto Teacher and the New Road Auto Book. The New World Order book is going to show you how the world really works. And it's definitely time for you to wake up out of that sleep, especially in the times that we're in right now. I told you at the beginning of the year, in the first quarter of 2022, we was going to have an event that was going to bring us down. And then also in the fourth quarter, we would have an event that would bring us down. That's exactly what happened. And now I'm going to tell you, in the first quarter, we're going to have an event that's going to break us down in 2023. 
And then also in the fourth quarter of 2023, we're going to have another main event. Now, of course, guys, the markets are still going to be pumping and dumping until they get ready to pull the full rug. But I'll let you know when that's about to happen. Now, also, I want to thank those who purchased the three kids' books. It's time to get re-educated. And also, much love to those who donate to the Cash Shop and Patreon. And in my Patreon, I keep you up to date with the New Road Order events. Also, I give you the New Road Order cryptos in the Patreon. Of course, you have to do your own research. But this next bull run is going to be a utility run. So you want to make sure that you have the cryptos that have utility. And much love to those who are shopping at both stores. Keep it coming. And of course, guys, we get into Bitcoin and cryptos first. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And right now we have Bitcoin and cryptos pulling back. And guys, do not forget CME opens tonight. So we know it's going to move the market. And we'll also move once the stock market opens. And guys, you heard the bank man talking about lobbying. And as the midterms end, so does the bank man riding off in the sunset with millions. And last week, we didn't hear anyone trying to hold him accountable. We'll see what they talk about this week. And don't forget all the money that he collected for Ukraine. But guys, we know this is all a movie, all a distraction so they can start building the fourth industrial revolution. Now, don't forget about paying attention to the actual indicators. We have yield rates, which they drove down on Thursday, and I definitely see them rising. And then, of course, guys, we have volume, tether, USDC, and then we have the Fed. Repo still over $2.2 trillion. Guys, make sure you're pulling the repo on a daily basis. And then we had Christine Lagarde speaking about the new digital economy. And guys, you know I did a video on her speaking about the new digital euro pilot. But she talks about faster and cheaper payments for who? That's right, guys, the banks. The same people that are in charge right now. Crypto was supposed to get rid of the banks, get rid of the middleman, peer-to-peer -peer transactions. But now we see Bitcoin has been taken over. And it's going to be for the robots, algorithms, and drones. Remember, crypto means hidden message, hidden meaning. So while they're paying each other with Bitcoin, the sheep are going to be going inside the metaverse. Remember, 2023 and 24 will be all about building. Remember the main phrase they use. Are we going to have a hard landing or soft landing? And they're talking about inside the fourth industrial revolution. And 23 and 24 is going to be the worst times ever in American history. The United States is going to lose the world reserve currency. And we're going to see the rise of the emerging markets, the rise of China the Dragon, along with that digital yuan backed by that digital SDR. They're going to be leading us. And it's all done on purpose. The emerging markets don't mind giving up a lot of the freedoms. That if Americans saw, they would be scared. With the stable coins like USDC, and then also with the CBDCs, guys, they're programmable. They can tell you what, where, and when, and how to buy, and you have three to six months to spend them, or poof, they're gone. No more savings. And we see Ripple, the Stellar Foundation, and Circle pushing CBDCs. And they tell us all the time, especially Brad Garlinghouse, I work with the central bank. So guys, the agenda is not hidden. It's right in front of your face. And the best place to put a lie is in plain sight. Over these next three years, humanity is going to be taken out of the workforce. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Now guys, do not forget about Grayscale. Was that about $16.1 on Thursday? Make sure you're paying attention to the actual allocations. But getting over into a little crypto news, we have Bahamas Regulator. And we know they definitely wasn't regulating FTX. But they contradict FTX claim that it was required to process local withdrawals. And guys, we see a lot of moving pieces around this FTX movie. Only thing you have to do is sit back, grab your popcorn, and let's watch it play out. And then lastly, guys, we have Crypto.com accidentally sends $400 million in Ethereum 
to the wrong exchange. And we see all these exchanges trying to verify their reserves like they were scrambling. But guys, we know we have over 21,000 crypto, still plenty of exchanges. So we know there's going to be a consolidation and an even bigger collapse in crypto. As the Fed continues to raise rates and shrink liquidity, we know these private companies are not going to be able to survive. All these funding rounds are going to stop. We saw the blueprint in big tech. We've seen this movie before. And we know when it comes to the new road order, it's all planned out. But guys, all I have for you, don't forget about the books, Crypto Teacher and the New Road Order book, plus the three kids books. It's time to re-educate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, BitChute, Binance, and not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip stocks, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get home stocks. Let's see where the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers, and that's the reason why I wrote my New Road Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends, so therefore we can start the re-education now. Because as we see the fourth industrial revolution, foundation is definitely here robots algorithms drones taking humanity out the picture we have to re-educate but let's get into the video part one king joshua and drama team save the village part two king joshua and drama team save new york long covid 33 Part 3. King Yashua and Grandma Tam goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.